Joining us now from Labour this morning is the uh, Shadow Mental Health Minister, Dr Rosanna Allen Khan, frontline doctor, of course. Um, we're hearing from the government this morning, good morning to good you, morning. saying that, that what we saw last night, uh, that mob that surrounded uh, not only the leader but also the Shadow Foreign Secretary, uh, nothing to do with Jimmy Sung. It's so disturbing. Nobody wants to see scenes like that play out for any politician of any political party. But I think when we listen to some of the language that was being said, it's very clear that, that words have consequences. And some of the words that the Prime Minister used when he was trying to smear Sir Keir Starmer were used yesterday. But quite frankly, if if the Prime Minister is truly sorry about what happened, he would come to Parliament and apologise unreservedly for his comments last week because we have seen that when you occupy the highest office in the land what you say matters and when he called Muslim women letterboxes we know that hate crimes around the country towards Muslim women went up and he has such a prominent platform and what he says matters and he should not be delving into the dark corners of the deep web to find smears and conspiracy theories to take down anyone that disagrees with him. Um We've got a grab um, of the Prime Minister in Blackpool. Uh, he did clarify what he'd said. And, and just to, to clarify, this is what the Prime Minister said in Blackpool last week. Talking not about uh, the leader of the opposition's personal um, record when he was, uh, when he was DPP. Uh, and, and, I, and I totally understand that he had nothing to do uh, personally with those decisions. Clarified it. He hasn't apologised, has he? He needs to provide more than a clarification. He needs to unreservedly come to the House and apologise, like so many of his MPs are asking him to do. Look, the British public at this time, when they are facing a cost of living crisis, wondering how they're going to choose between heating and eating, the last thing they need now is a Prime Minister who's so busy trying to cover his own back and deflect from his own shortcomings and rule breaking during lockdown. Yeah, but we're talking frankly, about this in particular, though, Doctor. Yeah. And you know, he doesn't feel he needs to apologise because what he's done is clarified what he meant. So there's no apology necessary. I think he needs to come and apologise unreservedly. And but he why? Needs to what get... for? Because he said that's what he meant. No, he needs to apologise because what he did was quite frankly smear Sir Keir Starmer, and it has had consequences but also what he's trying to do is deflect from the fact that he is not fit for the job he is not dealing with what matters to the country today okay there are people who are having to choose between heating and eating i'm seeing patients in my emergency department where i work in st george's coming in with burns toddlers coming in with scolds all over their bodies because they're using old water bottles and their parents cannot afford to pay the bills these are the real issues facing the country and this deflection of trying to smear Sir Keir Starmer and the fact that we're now all talking about that rather than the fact that today in Parliament we have an opposition day debate looking at the importance of children's mental health and talking about some real tangible things we can do to improve children's mental health. We're instead talking yet again about this smear and quite but frankly Boris Johnson needs to get a grip. He didn't want to smear Keir Starmer. He clarified the situation. That was not his intention. Well, I don't believe that for a hot second. He made a choice last week when he came to Parliament. He could have apologised for what he had done. He, let's be very clear. We have the but Prime he Minister feel of like this he has anything to apologise for. This within this highlights the problem that is him. Um, we come into public office to serve our communities, and Boris Johnson has come into public office to serve himself. And With an 80-seat majority. And he will happily smear anyone who stands in his way. Look, Kay, we all know that those closest to him last week even jumped ship. He's there singing, I will survive, while we have a country who is struggling to survive. They are struggling to put food on the table for their families. But he is a survivor. He's still there and he's got an 80-seat majority. And um, it's, it's a little bit like an echo chamber, isn't it? Because you can shout across as much as you want in the chamber. They're still sitting pretty with the uh, percentage that they have. I don't think they're sitting that pretty. At the end of the day, he's losing trust of his own staff, those closest to him. He's losing trust of his MPs. And I believe he's lost the trust of the country. And But quite frankly, Kay, what we need to be doing is just getting on with the job and talking about what really matters as the Labour Party So should you guys not just do... leave this and, you know, forget about uh, alleged smears or whatever and just say, OK, well, we have left we're thicker skinned than this and we're just going to move we on? We have left it. We have two opposition day debates today. First of all, talking about the cost of living and food security. The second one, 
talking about children's mental health. Last week, we were talking about the energy price cap and the fact that people cannot afford their bills and the cost of living crisis is, is, is flooring families. It's us that's getting on with the job and the Conservatives who are, quite frankly, infighting and, and letting the country down. How are our kids getting on when it comes to mental health? It's been such a challenging two years for them. I know, Kay. They are really, really struggling. And that's why what we're putting forward today is a package where we have said that when we're in government at the end of our first parliament, we will recruit 8,500 mental health staff. We will guarantee that every person begins treatment within a month, not just gets put on a waiting list, but begins treatment. We, we are calling for a counsellor in every secondary school and a shared counsellor to cover every single primary school. And we're also calling for there to be open access mental health hubs in the community. I know this is something that you care about a lot as well. It is, but how are you going to pay for it? Well, what we will do is we will um, levy VAT on private school fees, um, which will raise £440 million. We will also close the carried interest tax uh, loophole, which will raise uh, £1.7 billion, and we will use £576 million of that uh, for children's mental health. OK, is that enough? Well, this is ambitious. Um, we believe that this is what will enable us to um, provide all the things that I have just spoken about. But quite frankly, we have children. I mean, I see children coming into my um, you know, A&E who have had to wait sometimes over 700 days, around our country, over 700 days for mental health support. And we know that not investing in just one child's mental health has an impact for the whole family. If you have to give up work because your child is self-harming or you're worried that they are worried about taking their own lives, that has an impact on you and your job and your mental health and the siblings in the family. So it is a false economy not to invest in our children's mental okay. health. It's PMQs tomorrow. What would you say to both of the leaders ahead of PMQs? Put the country first. I think the government need to stop the smearing and get on with the job. And I have every faith in, in you know, Sir Keir Starmer. He delivers at every single PMQs. And I'm looking forward to what he's going to have to say tomorrow.